Um, this is a very, very famous piece um, by Purcell. Um, he's an English composer. Um, it's got dates here, 1659 to 1695. Um, uh, this is page 41 of Piano Time 3, but you can find it in loads and loads and loads of books. Um, don't make it too legato. It's got slurs written all over the place, which is a bit hmm, horrible, really. This would have been written for um, harpsichord. Pianos weren't around back in Purcell's day, um, and harpsichords had no dynamics, so they created um, what we use dynamics to do, which is create um, differences in sound. They did more with articulation. Um, so the idea of it kind of being very, very, very legato all the way through in these phrases was it just wouldn't have happened. So we're going to make sure that none of this is too legato. Here you've got a hold there. If I go there, um, there's a minim. So that's still down when you play this D. Then that D is still down when you play that A. So you get this lovely sound almost as if you're holding a pedal and then you end up with that thing in this is edited the apart from the notes the slurs are edited the dynamics are edited um that's it i was looking for any sort of articulation like um staccatos and um accents but there isn't actually any um feel free to make up your own you should be starting by now to sort of think of you know when you're looking at a piece of baroque music um be able to kind of think actually could I do something with that um, how would I articulate this um, what is it doing where where could I where does it feel like it should be getting louder where should it where does it feel like it should be getting quieter so I'm gonna play it but don't just copy um, work out some of your own stuff See, I like to have that as one legato articulation um, I think both of them work quite well no legato so that was another way again of playing it and what 
I was doing there was kind of changing the dynamics around. So rather than using the dynamics that were given, I was doing the, still that crescendo. I think really does need to be there because it's leading to this um, dominant, big dominant chord in the middle, um, which is you're in A minor, which is the answer to the question at the top, which is a um, key signature of C major. There's a sharp and seventh all over the place, which is that G sharp. to this big dominant chord and the dominant is the fifth so if we count up five from A one two three four five then we get E major ah sorry that's a more complicated version so still we have that that dominant sound in the middle and then back to the tonic So that's minuet. So just be, um, don't take what's on the page too literally because it certainly isn't what Purcell wrote. Purcell just wrote the notes. Um, and then the performer was expected to articulate it, was expected, well, not put dynamics in because you can't because they were harpsichordists at the time. But I mean, theoretically, if it had been written for a piano um, with the kind of how music was performed back then then yes we would have been expected to work out our own dynamics and our own trills and all sorts of stuff so take the notes as the notes everything else work out yourself <laughs>